Hello everyone and welcome to Yo Caribbean News and Culture. I'm Delinda Eiffel. Let's get right into some of the top stories from this week. Barbados is facing what's being described as one of the worst job cut experiences to date. According to General Secretary of the Barbados Workers Union, Sir Roy Trotman, the forthcoming job cuts in the public sector is expected to affect over 3,000 common laborers. During a press conference held earlier this week at the union's Harmony Hall headquarters, Sir Roy Trotman expressed that the job cuts matter was the worst experience he's dealt with throughout his career. Mr. Trotman expressed that while he understands the Barbadian government needs to result to job cuts as a necessary step for economic stipulation, such an attempt should not only affect workers in the public sectors, but also workers in the government and private sectors. CARICOM is strongly urging all small island developing states to begin to pay closer attention to climate changes and weather patterns as it is the leading cause in the natural disasters that all too often affect the countries of the Caribbean community. At a meeting held earlier this week between CARICOM, the United Nations, G77 and others, CARICOM representative Rhonda King pointed to the December 24, 2013 flash flood that severely affected the islands of Dominica, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The flash flood caused by abounding rain hit St. Vincent the hardest, killing nine people and killed six people in St. Lucia. Rondekin described the flash flood as the worst in recent history and noted that it is important to come to terms with the realities of climate change. King also assured that CARICOM plans to bring the issue of climate changes and its physical and socioeconomic effects on the small island developing states to the forefront for the 2014 year. In Dominica, people are being strongly cautioned to refrain from using the dead leaves off of banana and plantain plants in fear of spreading the black cigatoga disease. Black cigatoga is a leaf disease of banana plants caused by a fungus which spreads rapidly and it was first spotted in Dominica for the first time back in 2012. Carol Abraham, coordinator of the Black Sigatoga Management Program, specifically urged all costume designers to find alternatives from dead leaves off banana and planting plants when constructing senseis. Senseis are popular costumes in Dominica made from dry banana leaves. Abraham also cautioned farmers to refrain from using the dead plant leaves. Black Sigatoga is not threatening to humans. Guyana is said to have signed an agreement with the United Kingdom in efforts to enhance its country's fight against drug trafficking. The agreement between the two is expected to provide technical assistance and training to Guyanese law enforcement under the management of the UK. Well, if you ever wanted to travel from St. Kitts and Nevis to San Juan, Puerto Rico, you can now easily do so. The launch Seaborne Airlines travel to these countries recently went into full effect. Seaborne Airlines is based out of the U.S. Virgin Islands and will now make stops to and from St. Kitts and Nevis and San Juan, Puerto Rico. Nevis Minister of Tourism, Mark Brantley, is hoping for this new development to generate the country's tourism and increase airline traffic. Passengers aboard will enjoy all the typical amenities, such as snacks and beverages. Tassan Chin, how could you forget her, right? She's definitely officially a household name after winning season five of the hit NBC show, The Voice. Well, now the Jamaican singer is being announced as the first act to be a headliner at the 22nd annual Reggae Summer Fest, which is expected to take place in Montego Bay, Jamaica, later on this year in July. Now, this will be Chin's third time performing at the festival, but her first time as a headliner. Remaining acts for the July 2014 Reggae Summer Fest of Jamaica are expected to be released sometime in February. 
Our Culture Track segment is coming up next. You're watching your Caribbean News and Culture. Stay with us. We'll be right back. You're on your way to meet up with friends, but you can't seem to get anywhere quickly. You don't want your friends to be annoyed, so you text. You're on your way. Five seconds is the average time your eyes are off the road while texting while driving. Make sure you get where you're going. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. So, I got this new family. And I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. Welcome back to your Caribbean news and culture, everyone. It's time for our culture chat. Now, this coming Monday, January 20th, 2014, is the federal holiday in honor of nonviolent civil rights activist, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are just happy to have the day off from work, but how about doing something to really commemorate his legacy? Joining us here in the studio is Linda Apple, Director of Volunteer and Community Engagement at the Museum of Fine Arts Boston. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank Very you so much for being here. here. Now, the Museum of Fine Arts, they're having a Martin Luther King Jr. Day open house. And there's a lot going on, lots of events going on. So we're going to break them up into categories to explain it to everyone. Okay. So one of the categories you all have is special events. So yes. talk to us about some of the categories that will, some of the events that will fall under such a category. Okay. So first of all, I just want to say that um, the day is completely free and open to anyone who wants to come. We're open from 10 a.m. to 4.45 p.m. And this day is generously supported by Citizens Bank Foundation. This okay. is their 11th year supporting this event. Um, and our special events are, we have a really interesting um, new uh, performance art piece. So we have a sculpture that is um, right outside of the museum on Huntington Avenue Plaza, mm -hmm. and it's called Now Speak. And it's a, a lectern, it's a, like a podium, a cement, and people can get up and actually speak, and um, it really goes along with Martin Luther King Jr.'s, you know, his... Absolutely, his, the oratory. His, yeah. Exactly, mm -hmm. but of free speech, and the artist is an Argentinian um, born artist named Amalia Pica, mm -hmm. and she designed this podium so that people could get up and actually talk That's about great. whatever they wanted to say. And we have um, some very special guests, um, some community leaders who are going to be speaking, and we also have our Teen Arts Council, which is a leadership development program, okay. part of the museum. And they'll be, they'll be speaking that day, too. That's so those are, that's a special event. Mm -hmm. The other thing we have is music. We have um, Berkeley College of Music professor Ricardo Manzan. His band is going to be there, and they're playing 
lively, you oh, know, wow. lively music, percussion, and, and um, rhythm and mm -hmm. blues, and it's going to be very interesting. Yeah, uh, and that seems two, pretty two interactive, sets, too. Yeah. Yeah. Two sets. And then we have family art-making activities. We have um, f four or five different areas in the museum where families can go and mm -hmm. children can make art and look at art and um, really walk around the museum and um, with our museum educators make things and take them home with them. Mm -hmm. And everything is free. That's great. Yeah. So and it's throughout the day from right. 10 to 445. Now um, are there specific blocks of when these things are occurring or are they like reoccurring on a timely, like every it's, hour this is happening and every... Yep, it's, okay. on, it's ongoing and we have a program that we give okay. everyone when they come in the door. Okay. So then like you can this. choose what you want to Choose what you want to do. Um, you can just come into the museum and just walk around the galleries. We have tours. Mm -hmm. We actually have um, mini tours, so 30 minute um, tours on African American art. Great. And we have a lot of new acquisitions of African American art in the museum. We also have a new exhibition called Samba Spirit, which is an Afro-Brazilian exhibition. Okay. There'll be gallery talks in there with the curator. We also have family-friendly tours. Mm -hmm. So people can do so many things. Right. Um, or they can just you know walk around and enjoy the galleries. That would be great. Yeah. That's great. So it's definitely a day full of lots of events and things that people can interact in instead of being home. Absolutely. You know? so that's Absolutely. great. Absolutely, yeah. Now, why is it important, do you think, for the MFA to do something like this for the community? So we, we really want to be accessible. Um, we feel that you know, art is for everyone, and we want people to really come and enjoy the museum. Um, the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is you know, he spoke about nonviolence and social activism, and we really feel that you know, art can be a way for people to express their creativity and their social activism. So it's important for us to be open and accessible and for everyone to feel like they, the museum is there Right. A place where they can come, they come. and express themselves or just enjoy, you know, the beautiful art objects around right. them. No, that's great. And the events cater to age groups of all? All ages. All ages. Um, you know, it's family friendly, so mm -hmm. bring your kids. Um, you know, you can come on a date if you want yeah. to. Um, <laughs> that ought to be interesting. It's really for everyone. Um, you know, there's intergenerational groups coming. Mm -hmm. We see grandparents with their grandchildren, grandchildren yeah. and it's really very family friendly. We have lots of places to eat in the museum, oh, come and have lunch. Right. Um, so you can actually come in the morning, have absolutely. lunch, and go right back at it because it's from 10 to yeah. 4.45 all And day. again, I just want to say that everything is free. All right. the activities, you can go to our website, www.mfa.org, mm -hmm. and see the full list of activities. It's like this, this program yeah. is online. Yeah. Um, and you can you know, pick and choose what you want to do. Um, it does get kind of crowded, so yeah. I would say, you know, come early and um, you, you can hear the speeches outside mm -hmm. while you're maybe, you know, standing in line, but there's lots to do right. and uh, you can spend the day there. That's great. Now I'm going to get into somewhat of the planning process. What kind of work goes into putting an event like this on? Um, it's a lot of work, but it's really fun. <laughs> I mean, there's a whole team of us that mm -hmm. does this. We can't, obviously, I, I don't do it alone. There's right. a whole team of, of people in the museum, and um, it's a great effort. And, you know, take, we start planning probably, you know, six to eight months in advance yeah, for something like this. Pretty much as like soon this. as one is done, you yeah. start it for the next year. Yeah, we that. have other events like this, too. So we have um, several free days throughout the year, okay. but this one is probably our, our largest. Our largest, that's yeah. great. Now, you mentioned that this is the 11th annual. 11th annual that Citizens Bank Foundation has supported. We've been okay. doing this since um, the late 90s, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so before I was even working there. But, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but um, this one, we're very, very you know, pleased in that um, Citizens Bank has supported this for 11 years, mm -hmm. and, and um, it really helps us to, to be able to have these, these free days where the museum is open and accessible right. and free to everyone. Right. Now, how do you, in essence, come up with what events will cater best and best reflect the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King? That's a really good question. We sort of look at what the exhibits are on mm -hmm. view and we try to match those with um, thinking about, you know, sort of the things that he, um, his legacy and his message mm -hmm. of, um, you know, peace and nonviolence and um, so we look at the exhibitions, mm -hmm. um, and then we think about, we also have a film going on, and so we think about the films, and we think about all the different programs that the museum has to offer, um, and we try to tie those in. Right. We always do um, talks, 
gallery talks and, and tours, mm -hmm. and there's so many different kinds of art in the museum right. that you can always find something that ties into what his, you know, what he was really all about. Right. So, and then, like you mentioned earlier, art in essence is an expression of whether it be peace and equality, and Absolutely. art definitely speaks to to many um, aspects of that. Now, I'm going to mention some specifics that you have going sure. on. Um, one thing that's piquing my curiosity, you mentioned the film that's yes. being showcased, and it's called Fados. 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 What's, yeah. do you, what, what's that about? So it's actually in Portuguese. Okay. And it's um, with English subtitles, and it's a it's a film about um, music, and um, it's there's a there's a if you don't mind, I, I, oh, I can um, look at the absolutely. description here. Put this um, beautiful thing to work. Beautiful, <laughs> right, right. So it's um, it's a it's called um, Fados, mm -hmm. and it explores the most emblematic musical genre in this ravishing fusion of cinema, song, dance, and instrumental numbers. It's in okay. Portuguese. So the reason why we've, we're doing this is because of the um, Samba Spirit exhibition that okay. I was talking about. Mm -hmm. A lot of the things from that, that in that exhibition are um, Afro-Brazilian. They're from you know Brazil and other parts of, of um, Latin America and the Caribbean, mm -hmm. and so Obviously, in, in Brazil, they speak Portuguese, right. so right. we're kind of tying that in to, into the film, to right. the Samba spirit. And that's great. And I think one of the things that um, sticks out to me the most is, of all the events that you guys are having, they're, the variety is so diverse. Yes. And that within itself speaks to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s message and you know, his hope for equality and, Absolutely. you know, the diversity of the events you're having alone, yeah. you know, so that's great. So we're going to take a quick break. Okay. And when we come back, we'll speak more of all the great things that you can get into on Monday, January 20th at the Museum of Fine Arts, Boston. Stay with us. Hey girl, que pasa? Our weekend was crazy. What I can remember. Wait, wait, wait. So down, Chica. Take it easy. A what? A picture of me? Who sent it to you? How did she get it? I'm not even friends with her. You gotta send it to me now. This must have been from Saturday night. I was so high. Who do you think got it? I wish you didn't smoke weed. You're not the same when you smoke. And I miss my friend. I'll be outside. Welcome back to your Caribbean News and Culture, everyone. As many of you know, this coming Monday, January 20th, is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. It's a holiday, so instead of being at home, enjoying the holiday, why not get out and enjoy the holiday at the Museum of Fine Arts Boston? Joining us here in the studio is Linda Apple, who is the Director of Volunteer and Community Engagement at the Museum of Fine Arts. And we've been talking about all the events that you guys are showcasing and putting on. There's a variety of them, very well diversed. 
there's another event called Now Speak. Talk to us a little bit about that. Okay, that is a, it's a new installation at the museum. It's the first time that we've had a performance art piece. So it is actually a lectern, mm -hmm. kind of like a c cement podium that is gonna, going to be right on the museum plaza as you walk in the door outside. Mm -hmm. And the artist's intention was that, um, it's called Now Speak. So she built it so that people could actually get up and say whatever they wanted to say. It's really um, kind of a, um, uh, it's about free speech, so mm -hmm. kind of exactly what Martin Luther King Absolutely. was all about. Mm -hmm. So we're very excited to have this installed for that day. For right. it, it, it's an inaugural um, speeches will be on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and our Teen Arts Council, which is um, our Teen Leadership Development Program, has actually put this whole program together. So they'll right. be speaking. They've chosen their high school students from the Boston area. Oh, great. They work for the museum. Great. They've chosen speeches, um, historical in nature, and they'll be speaking, and they'll be giving excerpts, and some of them are actually the, the full speech. Um, and we have also have some community leaders who will be here. Oh, great. And be there on, on Monday giving mm -hmm. speeches. So it will... If people want to come out and watch the speeches, and then they can actually, after about one or two o'clock, mm -hmm. they can try their own hand at getting up and giving a speech. That's great. They can bring so a speech with them. it's interactive as well. Interactive. Mm -hmm. They can give you know a speech on their own. They can do it with someone else. Right. They can bring something prepared, or they can just right. get up and you know say whatever they want. So right. it's really we really hope that people use this. It's um, the the artist's intention was for people to actually you know interact with mm -hmm. this piece of art. Okay. And it's an so, actual podium? It's a big, like a it's a yeah. very large cement podium, <laughs> and you can't miss it. It's going to be right on the side of the museum, right by the door. Okay. So, so that's great. Yeah. That's great. And then that is an outdoor activity. That's an outdoor activity. Indoors. Yes. Hopefully very. it won't be too, I don't think it's going to be too cold on Monday. So, so yeah. You um, never know. We're in New England. But right, exactly. Either way, dress accordingly. Exactly, and dress accordingly. You can still enjoy. Right, but there's a lot inside, too. Mm -hmm. There are art activities for families. There, It's the last day of the John Singer Sargent exhibition. If you haven't seen it, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful watercolor exhibition, John Singer Sargent's work. Okay. It's the last day, so you have. So if you haven't seen it, yeah. I would So I would Monday will be the last Monday's day. Monday's the last okay. day, yeah. So That's I encourage good. you to come. And we have... Um, we have music, we have uh, a film, we have, mm -hmm. as I said, the art activities, mm -hmm. we have tours, family-friendly tours, right. tours for adults. Um, and the main point? The main it's point is free. free. It's free, <laughs> and we're open from 10 a.m. Right. to 445. And the reason you know, we're free is thanks to Citizens Bank Foundation, okay. they, their generous support. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Well, thank you so very much for being here. And I hope that you guys get out and enjoy all the festivities at the Museum of Fine Arts. That's all the time we have this week. Linda, thank you very much for thank being here. Thank you very much for having me. And you can catch the repeat of our show on Saturday and Sunday at 10.30 a.m. But in the meantime, check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash YCNC. Give us that thumbs up. And you can also follow us on Twitter at YCNC13. And we're always on the web, www.yourcaribbeannews.com. I'm Delinda Eiffel. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you all next time.